as we welcome you to NASCAR on Fox and the 62nd running of the great American race along with Jeff Gordon Jamie McMurray I'm Chris Myers and nice to have you along with us for this special moment I have been to a lot of Daytona 500s Chris never have I felt the excitement and energy we've had great racing on the track but we've got the president landing right now the fans are pumped up I mean wow what a day it's one of the most incredible things I've ever seen to, to see they said that plane's 800 feet above the racetrack right now what an entrance by the president of the United States he's the Grand Marshal he'll give the command presidents of course have attended NASCAR races Daytona before but again the first to give the command for this the Daytona 500 well Mr. President of all the events that you can attend why did you decide to come here today to the great American race it really is the great American race, and I look at this as almost a patriotism kind of thing. It's incredible. The people are incredible. We love the area. We love the state, and it's a very exciting. You know, I've been here four times before as a civilian, and now I'm uh, in a different capacity. We love NASCAR, and we love the people of NASCAR. And you mentioned you have been here before. The last time, though, back in 2001. So what is it about NASCAR that you enjoy personally? I think it's really the bravery of these people. I mean, these are very, you know, they do all the safety things and everything, but it's it takes great courage. It's the speed. It's really the technology. You look at what's happened just over the last 10 years with the cars. I love to see it. I love to watch it. Okay, so inquiring minds want to know, as the president, are you allowed to drive your own car? Well, you know I'm not, but I think I'm going to, really, right now, if I can, I'm going to hop into one of these cars and I'm going to get into this race, if possible. All right, you hear, heard it here first. Yeah, I love the idea. Right, thank you Thanks for being for here. Much. Enjoy your time. Great honor. Thank, thank you. you. Welcome back, your United States Air Force Thunderbirds, and to deliver the most famous words in motorsports at the Daytona 500. Please welcome this year's Grand Marshal, the 45th President of the United States of America, Donald J. Trump, accompanied by First Lady of the United States, Melania Trump. Daytona International Speedway, we love our country, and it's truly an honor to be with all of you at the great American race. Gentlemen, start your engines. Mr. President and First Lady, would you please do us the honor of leaving the field for the Daytona 500? Well, this is indeed a first. Donald Trump is the second sitting president to attend the Daytona 500. George W. was here in 2004. A race won by the man who will wave the green flag for today's race, Dale Earnhardt Jr. But this is truly an historic first. A sitting United States president pacing the field for the great American race. He said he wanted to do a lap. He's going to do it. Well, he is the president. <laughs> he has that right. And I just can't imagine as a driver, as a competitor, the magnitude of this. This only builds up what is the great American race and the, one of the biggest races in the world to make put that much pressure on you to win this race today. I'm not sure how this idea came about, but I have an inkling. A phone call was received the other day in Franklin, Tennessee, at the home of our former colleague, Darrell Waltrip, who retired from broadcasting at the end of the 2019 season, asking him to fly to Palm Beach this morning and join President Trump on Air Force One on the ride up here to Daytona. So I would not be surprised if Darrell had a little hand in what we're about to see. Maybe he's giving him some tips down there about those high banks here in Daytona. And are the drivers excited about this? Well, here's Clint Boyer's radio. Can you still pace the field? Yep. <laughs> Love it. Gosh, it's awesome. You know, Mike, people ask me, do you miss it? You know, are you jealous of those competitors out there? Today, right now, I am. I would love to be in this Daytona 500 field out there competing today. This is just so special. Now we know that at least 70 miles an hour is required to uh, keep those cars up on the banking. Those presidential limousines, which are built on truck chassis, 
weigh about 22,000 pounds, will probably not be doing 70 through the 31 degree banking of turns one and two. But uh, we'll stay down on the apron. Now, you think when he finishes this lap, is he going to do a burnout? What kind of horsepower is underneath the hood of that car? Well, Jeff, our uh, Fox graphic department came up with a comparison between the NASCAR Cup cars and what Secret Service calls the Beast, the presidential limousine uh, built by Cadillac on a truck chassis. But with Cadillac sheet metal, it's two feet longer than the Cup car. And it's a little heavier at 22,000 <laughs> pounds. Horsepower and top speed is sufficient uh, but unknown. It's been estimated that those side windows are five inches thick of bulletproof glass and that the sheet metal is some eight inches thick as it's fully armored. And of course, seating capacity seven for the limo and one for our cup cars. Only thing I wish they'd have modified on that limo is put a spoiler on that rear deck lid just for NASCAR. Well, it does have a couple of antennas for communication, after all. Uh, not sure what those flags on the front fender are going to do for aerodynamics. <laughs> Nor do we care. Donald Trump is the fourth sitting United States president to attend a race here. Ronald Reagan gave the command to start from Air Force One and was here when Richard Petty drove to his 200th vic uh, victory over Cale Yarborough in a Firecracker 400. George H.W. Bush, the summer of 92, and George W. Bush, the 20, 2004 Daytona 500. Uh, Bill Clinton campaigned at Darlington at a NASCAR race, but the president with the closest ties to the sport was Jimmy Carter. One of Jimmy's closest friends in Georgia when he was governor was Alf Knight, the longtime superintendent of Atlanta Motor Speedway. Uh, Jimmy would come down, be a visitor to the track often, and was honorary starter for a race there when he was governor. Someone on Twitter uh, took a picture of the presidential limousine and emblazoned a NASCAR style number 45 on the door, but that idea was rejected in favor of the presidential seal. <laughs> well, we know but the, these race fans, they've been ready all week. They're super excited, waving flags of their favorite driver, but I got to imagine there's a lot of American flags waving out in that infield right now as we get ready to take the green flag here. And if you're a fan of professional cars, limousines, and the like, there is a great exhibit of presidential limousines of the past at the Henry Ford Museum in Dearborn, Michigan. And a big roar from the crowd as they come past. The green and American flags are waving from the flag stand. That's a sight for the ages right there. A very special moment for our sport. After all, what sporting event would not want to have the President of the United States in attendance, much less to get the party started? All right, President Trump paced the field, and then he asked for an official's radio to all the drivers and crews. Drivers, this is President Trump. It was an honor to open the Daytona 500. Have a phenomenal day. Have a great race. Be safe. God bless you. We love you. If you weren't nervous before, <laughs> how about now? My goodness. For the best access, perspective, and personalities in all of sports, follow us at Fox Sports on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. For more great NASCAR on Fox content, subscribe to our channel. It's somewhere right around here.